Good morning and welcome everyone to the Cabinet uh, held by Microsoft Teams uh, for Wednesday 9th of February 2022. Uh, as you'll all be aware, the meeting will be recorded and made available to view on the Council's website. Thank you. Do we have any apologies? No, okay. Um, just to inform members that, uh, to inform you that the agenda is being altered and I will be pulling item number six from the report. Thank you. Okay. On to declarations of interest. Councillors and officers are reminded of their personal responsibility to declare any personal and or prejudicial interest in respect of any item of business on the agenda in accordance with the Local Government Act 2000, the Council's Constitution and the Code of Conduct for both councillors and officers. And I can see a number of hands up there. Okay, if I can go to Councillor Pritchard first, please. Yeah, thank you, Leader. I'd like to declare an interest in item agenda number five. My grandparents are council tenants. Thank you for that. Um, OK, I'll take all of them and then I'll go to uh, um, Lisa Lane in terms of uh, a legal response. OK, Councillor Stenner, please. Yes, can I please have some guidance on agenda item number five also? My brother-in-law has a garage tenancy with the authority. OK, oh, OK, thank you for that. Uh, Councillor George. Yeah, thank you. Uh, item five again, I'd like to declare an interest. I am a tenant of a council garage. OK, thank you. And Councillor Cook. Yeah, thank you, Leader. I would like to declare an interest on item, agenda item number five as my family relative uh, lives in a council property. OK, and uh, based on all those comments, uh, Rob Tranter, if I could bring you in, please, for some advice. Yes, um, this is going to be interesting now because I'm not sure whether you're going to be core it. Uh, how many have we got left? No, we're OK. We've got three left, haven't we? Yeah, um, we have so, Councillor Whiting, Councillor Whitcomb and Councillor Gordon and myself. Yeah, yeah, four, you're, you'll be OK. So, right. Um, uh, Councillor Pritch, Councillors Pritchard and Cook have been uh, have been in touch with me. And um, bearing in mind their uh, close personal associates, so um, Councillor Pritchard's grand grandfather, I think, grandparents, I think, and um, uh, Councillor Cook's, um, I think, cousin, who he's quite close to. Um, so I think they would come in within the category of close personal associates. So the advice I've given to them is because their well-being is is going to be affected by the report because the report is about setting rents then they ought to leave um, the meeting whilst this um, report is, is debated and voted upon. Um, so following that advice, the same applies certainly to Councillor George. Um, it's, uh, yeah, he's, a, he's a tenant of the council, uh, rents a garage, so his well-being is likely to be affected um, by this um, report. So therefore, I think um, Councillor George ought to leave um, the meeting. Your interest is uh, personal and prejudicial. And similarly then with um, Councillor Stenner, I think Councillor Stenner, you said it's your brother-in-law, so I assume your brother-in-law you would class as a close person associate. Um, so following that as well, um, I think you ought to leave um, the uh, leave the uh, the meeting um, whilst this um, this item. Uh, is being discussed, debated and voted upon. So um, four, we're going to lose four members when we deal with um, the, the rent setting report. OK, uh, is everybody OK with that? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, clear, very clear and understood. Thanks okay. so much for that, Rob, Lovely. and that clarification. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, so we'll go on to um, item number three on the agenda and that's to approve and sign the following minutes of the cabinet held on the 26th of January. I'll just go through uh, uh, members in terms of accuracy by page. OK, page one. Page two. Page three. Page four. Page five. Page six. And page seven. Do I have a mover for those? Yeah, thank Please. you, Councillor George. I'll second, uh, oh, Leader. Thank you very much, Councillor Whitcomb. And if I could have a show of hands, please, on screen. 
Thank you very much. That's passed. Thank you, right, members. Um, also, obviously, we note the Cabinet Forward Work Programme at every Cabinet meeting that we hold. So, um, um, obviously, that's involved. In, it's in your pack. Um, are there any amendments or any changes that anyone would like to see? Or are we all happy to approve those and note them? And if you're happy, can I have a show of hands, please? Thank you very much, everyone. OK, uh, moving on to the next item. And obviously, can, uh, four councillors have been advised now in terms of um, having to leave for this item. So if I can ask Councillor Stenner, Councillor Pritchard, Councillor Cook and Councillor George to all leave, please. I will inform you as uh, we come back after the decision has been made. Thank you very much all. I'll just wait for them to leave. Thank you very much. OK, and if I can go to Councillor Whiting then to please introduce the report. Yeah, uh, thank you, Leader. Um, this report is for members to consider and decide on the increased uh, council housing rent charges proposed in this report. The charges focus on council house rents, but also include garages and are intended to be effective for the uh, housing revenue account for the 2022-2023 financial year. Members will be aware that the preparation of the housing revenue account HRA budget is quite separate to the work involved in setting the general fund budget and council tax. The HRA is funded by rental income received from council tenants rather than the council taxpayer. Whilst there is a clear separation of these funds, most of the proportion of council tenants rent is funded from financial support in the form of housing benefit or universal credit which is derived from the taxpayer's purse. Therefore, value for money must always be sought. 75% of our tenants receive financial assistance towards their rent. This report came before the Housing and Regeneration Scrutiny Committee on February the 1st, and the committee recommended that Cabinet approve 3.2 Roman numeral 3, a 2% 2 a 2 increase or £93.62 for 52 weeks additional of £1.84 per week. Which is, which is an additional income of £1 million, allowing for a small margin to, be, to reflect the unprecedented increase in material costs that we're currently experiencing. The committee also recommended Cabinet approve 3.2 Roman numeral 6, the level or rent of garages from April 2022 to be increased by 2.2% to £8.39, sorry, an increase of £8.39 per week, and that the Cabinet also approved 3.2 Roman numeral 7, recommending a review of the current rent policy to reflect affordability. Therefore, I move the re recommendations as set out in the report for the reasons contained throughout the report. Thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor Whiting. Uh, Councillor Whitcomb. Yeah, I'm more than happy to second the report as outlined in uh, section three, Leader. Thank you, and thank you, Councillor Whiting, for um, confirming the, the 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 view of the uh, committee that met to discuss this. So thank you, uh, Nick Taylor Woods. Would you like to come in and make any further comment on that before we open it up? Um, I was just going to add some extra context, but I think everyone's digested the just digested the report, and Councillor Whiting has set it out. So I'll just be on hand to answer any questions. OK, thank you ever so much. OK, so um, obviously you've heard that uh, the, the scrutiny committee actually favoured um, the, the set Roman numerals that uh, Councillor Whiting set out there. So that's a 2% increase on the HRA and two, and the 2% 2 uh, for the rent of garages as well. Um, so um, obviously there was also another uh, recommendation in there, which is a really important one around the review about the uh, to reflect the affordability. And I think that's a really important point there that you know, given the cost of living crisis that an energy crisis that we're going into, uh, I think this is something that is really welcomed actually in the recommendations. So do any of you have any further comments that you'd like to raise in relation to that? No, are you content and happy with that then in terms of the recommendations that came through scrutiny? Yeah, okay. All right, that's straightforward, Nick. You haven't got any questions, um, but I think you know it, it, it's all laid out very clearly, clearly and concisely in the report. So I think we all acknowledge uh, the efforts being made here to at least uh, um, have some sort of increase. Okay, so further to that, then no more questions. I'll go to the vote.
just waiting for those to know. That's it. That's been carried. And thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Can someone notify uh, the others to come back in? Yeah, I'll do that now. Thanks, Nadia. They should be coming through now. OK. Yep, come in. Thank you. Wait for one more. Brilliant. OK, thank you ever so much and welcome back, everyone. Um, OK, so we're moving now to item number seven on the uh, the agenda for today, and that's the, the review of the score streets. Over to Councillor Jamie Pritchard, please. Thank you, Leader. Um, the attached report was debated in the Environment and Sustainability Committee last night. The, the scrutiny committee were asked to consider the report and they agreed to proceed in line with the recommendations that have been outlined in the scrutiny report in 3.1, 3.2 and 3.3. These recommendations were members are asked to give their offer their views to officers recommendations that the experimental traffic regulation orders should be made permanent and members were asked to offer their views on officer, officers recommendations that no new or additional pedestrian and cycle zones uh, should be considered for the other school sites within the borough as part of the future programme of works at this point in time. So to provide some background to Cabinet on the report leader, uh, a proportion of the funding was allocated to the Council to support schemes at four primary schools initially, and these were Libanus uh, Primary School, Risca Primary School, Toyn Primary School and Ababagoy Primary School. The schemes pro uh, prohibit vehicles driving along the roads immediately adjacent to the schools at the start and, and finish times. The experimental schemes to appear to have been generally well received within their respective communities and most of the survey respondents felt that the schemes provide some overall benefits and should remain in place. The scrutiny committee did however raise some uh, issues regarding enforcement and that was noted by Gwent police despite the force being in favour of the intentions of the scheme. So with this in mind, I informed members of the committee last night that I would welcome further discussions with the local members about what we can collectively do uh, to promote the concept of safe access to schools in the schools in question, which I'm sure all cabinet and all councillors will uh, will acknowledge is very important. Initial consultation began with uh, local members and the prior cabinet member in June 2020, where no objections were received. In July 2020, statutory consultation with the emergency services and statutory bodies, community and town councils and the affected, uh, affected schools. Again, no, no objections were received. The report outlines response from local members following the introduction of the scheme in which several points on design and enforcement were raised by the local members. On, on December the 9th, 2021, uh, a summary of comments received from public notice and open online questionnaire was sent to the local members for the Blackwood, St Martins and Risco West wards uh, alongside myself as cabinet member for infrastructure and property. Two comments from local members in response to the to the summary that were sent on, uh, sent out on December the 9th were outlined in this report. Again, no local member has asked for any of the proposals to be withdrawn. Just like to finally uh, say, Leader, the, the active uh, encouragement to provide traffic free environments around schools is something that I'm sure all councillors will want to see. The benefits for the local environment and safer access to schools has been the driver of this policy. On June the 4th, 2019, the council declared a climate emergency. So it's important that we do everything we can to reduce carbon emissions across the borough. Thank you, Leader. Thank you ever so much, Councillor Pritchard. And if I can go to Councillor Stenner now, please. Yes, thank you, Leda. I'm happy to second the recommendations held within the report, and I echo the comments made by Councillor Pritchard. Thank you. And I've just seen Marcus Lloyd appear on the screen. Um, so I'm wondering, um, did you have anything further to add to um, the report, Marcus? No, thank you, Leda. Uh, Councillor Pritchard uh, more than adequately covered the report there. OK, thank you. All right. OK, do I have any questions around that or any comments? Councillor Whiting. Yeah, more of a question, uh, more of a comment than a question. Um, I I do welcome these uh, these orders. Um, I know that the residents views have been taken into account. There's a school in my ward that is uh, involved with this um, and there were questions which I know that have been I think have been answered. 
Um, but I think there is, uh, we need to note that issue of enforcement, which I know that people have, have, have talked about. Um, and I think this will be most effective when there is full enforcement. However, I understand this is a matter for the police. Um, we know that the police do good work for our residents day in and day out, and they do everything they can with the number of officers and resources that they have to keep residents safe. Um, so the matter is about resources for them and what they receive from the central government in London. So I think this is just another example of how the under resourcing of the police at the national level affects us here at the local level. And I think we as a local authority should make sure that we make the representations that we can and support the police in the ways that we can to um, ensure that, you know, that the police are resourced in the best way they possibly can be to ensure that, the, you know, the work that they do is as effective as it can be for our residents. No, thank you for that comment there, Councillor Whiting. Councillor Pritchard. Yeah, thank you, Leader, and thank you, uh, Councillor Whiting, and thank you also for taking the time to uh, take part in the consultation. Obviously, uh, Councillor Whiting, you're, you're you're listed with with your views in there. I think that's important. The local councillors, you know, do engage with the with the process uh, throughout. And and your point on the on, on the police, I want to put on record, you know, I would good work in relationship or great work in relationship with with the police who do a fantastic job and they're not just there as a force but they are involved in the community in every way shape or form uh, and I want to place on record my support for the police but Council Whiting is correct um, under resourcing uh, of, of anything it's, it's never great for us the police are acting with it within their resources to the best of their ability but we do need more officers and that does come from central government and you know i would echo councillor whiten's plea there for extra support from central government uh, to allow us councils and and everybody in in life uh, to do the best they possibly can no thank you ever so much for that councillor pritchard and i think it's important to note isn't it we do have very good working relationships uh with Gwent police you know we work in partnership on many many items across the borough um, so it's really important that you know we do stress that but again as you say it fundamentally comes from the, the source of UK government and that is important that we raise that so thank you. Marcus did you want to come in? Yes thank you leader uh, in, in relation to the point that uh, Councillor Whiten has raised there he was part of the discussion last night with, with members at scrutiny and um, although we don't have powers at the moment for, for moving traffic offences there is opportunity for us to do a bit of research on that for um, ANPR sort of enforcement and seeing if that's an opportunity where we could possibly work in partnership with the police or look at um, further transfer of powers further down the road from, from Welsh Government for moving traffic offences, which I know can be considered to try and make sure that um, we can look at this enforcement and it's not resource heavy for the police and we can look at some sort of digital electronic means of undertaking that in the future. You know, that, that's really useful that you commented on that because I think that is something that, you know, we could explore going forward. And I think that is key, isn't it? Because it, it's a different approach now, I think, very much. And I think the electronic element of that is really important, as you say, when resources are very slim. Christina, did you want to come in? Yeah, thank you, Leader. And, uh, you know, the conversation has been predominantly about, you know, how we enforce this behaviour, but just picking up uh, the Deputy Leader's point around, you know, the climate change agenda and the carbon emissions generated from this behaviour, you know, it strikes me that it's we need to tackle that at source and a conversation and engagement with, with these uh, parents predominantly, isn't it, and uh, relatives around behaviours. And I know myself, you know, I drop my daughter to school every morning and it's en route on my way to work. And we just need to be mindful of people's general behaviours and how they incorporate the school run into that and the traffic generated around the school gates. So, you know, whilst enforcement and regulation is an important uh, part of addressing this issue, I think it's a wider sort of engagement and dialogue that we need to have with the community around climate change. And I know that is something that we are working through with you as members in terms of how do we engage our community in this big climate uh, change agenda that uh, concerns us all. Thank you, Lita. No, absolutely. And, you know, I know as a cabinet, we've spoken many times around this very issue and this is incremental steps, isn't it, to create the right environment. And I think these are the right moves. Uh, to go down that, you know, in terms of active travel, we're working hard on that, on that front, you know, in terms of modal shift, you know, to get people onto public transport, all this, these are all bits and they're all parts of the jigsaw that actually helps 
in that climate emergency that we declared. And it is really important that everyone acknowledges that. So your comment on engagement is really important. But I think, you know, people were concerned that, you know, you know, there has been a certain level of engagement, but we can always do more. And I think that that's where we all come together. And it's about a collective approach to all of these wicked questions and wicked problems that we've got, you know, around climate emergency. So there are many things that we can do. So thank you for those comments. OK, uh, I can't see any other hands up now. So um, without further ado, we'll go to the vote. The, the poll hasn't then? appeared yet, uh, Leader, for me. No. Oh, oh, it's no, it's... Yeah, it's just come up. Thank you. That's unanimous. Thank you, everyone. It was a little bit slow for the last one to come through, but thank you. That's unanimous. OK, if I can move on to item eight on the agenda then, and that's the to receive a report in terms of the Wiley Highway improvement. If I can hand over to Councillor Pritchard, please. Yes, uh, <clears throat> thank you, Leader. So the report summarises the position in relation to road safety measures already implemented along the B4251 between Wiley and NSD and sets out options for further safety works for the Cabinet consideration in light of substantial removal of tree cover adjacent to the road. So to provide uh, some background before coming to the recommendations leader, a safety improvement study was commissioned by Amy Consultants on, in March 2020. The area focused on the then de-restricted section of the road and the road now has a 40 mile per hour restriction placed on it, which begins at the north end of Unesty and terminates just south of the Gethley Grice roundabout on the A472 and also includes included the 40 mile per hour section leading to the roundabout at that time. There are eight bends along the section of road which were part of the review. The stretch of road within the study area is a well established route which does not conform to the current highway network standards uh, like many roads within the county borough. The speed limit was previously designated at 60 miles per hour but was later reduced to 40 miles per hour as recommended in the report. Since 2014 there have been nine uh, recorded accidents within the area, area of the study and the data shows that the accidents are spread throughout the entire length of the study area including one slight accident within the 40 mile per hour section of the north end of the route. Although the majority of the accidents appear to have occurred on the straight sections it must be noted that the straight sections are relatively short and the longest being approximately 300 meters and the average speed 40.5 miles per hour as outlined in the section 5.4. The bends are encountered a quick, in quick succession. Therefore, even on the straight section, the driver is always ex exiting a bend or preparing to enter the next. Taking into consideration the relevant factors, Cabinet is asked to consider the content of the report and to endorse the following recommendations. 3.1, support the installation of a concrete post and chain link fence along the section of highway. 3.2, should scheme progression be approved to approve the allocation funding from the corporate, sorry, somebody's at my door, but a project capital budget to, to enable the design and construction of the, of the highway and 3.3 to improve approve funding from the corporate projects capital budget for the advanced design fees that are incurred and undertaking the study of 50k. Um, I'll leave it there uh, leader and answer my door. Okay thank you so much Councillor Pritchard. Um, okay if I can go to Councillor Gordon please. Yeah thank you chair I'm happy to second the recommendations laid out at three. Okay Thank you for that and, and thank you. Um, Marcus, did you have anything further to add? No, again, Councillor Pritchard adequately covered the, the report there. OK, thank you so much. OK, um, um, obviously uh, it would be remiss of me not to mention that obviously this this road actually forms part of uh, the main link in my the ward that I represent and I'm more than happy to see this report before us today uh, to improve the safety um, of this this road. And it's an important road that obviously links the, the, the whole Sahawi Valley. So I'm really pleased to see the recommendations made here today. And thank you officers for taking the time to compile this report. 
I think it's imperative that uh, we move forward in a positive light in terms of the tragic ad accidents that have occurred on this this route. So uh, do we have any comments from anyone here? Councillor Whiting? Yeah, I just wanted to add my um, support for it as well and the other changes that have taken place on that road. Um, just I was thinking about the, the highway code changes and cyclists on, on that road. And I know when I have come back, well, that's the route that I often use to get back to Risca from um, Estrad Manek. And many times I've encountered cyclists on that road and some of those bends, you will, you don't see them until you, you're right there. And if you, if somebody was for some reason traveling on there at 60 miles per hour, for, as they were previously, and I know that this, this isn't about that, but you know, I think with the changes to the highway code where, where cyclists are now more, they don't have to necessarily go off to the side as they did before, then this this is just even more helpful, I suppose. And so I just wanted to welcome the uh, the changes that have happened on that road. Yeah, thank you ever so much. Thank you, Councillor Whiting. Did have any other comments in relation to this? No? OK, um, so I think it's quite clear, everyone, um, that uh, the, 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 cab the recommendations are set out. They're very clear. Uh, and again, this is another part of the safety measures that we want to take to, to make on this road. So um, without any other further questions, um, we'll go to the vote. That's unanimous. Thank you ever so much, everyone. And thank you, officers, um, for that report. Um, Mazia, I think we can now terminate and stop recording.